Hey man, but it's it's good to see you again, bro. Last time, last time we, we chat was at uh Man Code. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and since then, man, you you've been all over like the the features, like the articles, like aware brands. It's it just um, you know, when we talked about remember last when we, during in Atlanta, Man Code was talking about like um, entrepreneurship, and I was talking to you about the episodes when I wanted you to have a, wanted to have a conversation before. Yeah, um, but I paused it, but. Um, it's good to have that synergy back again for us to have a discussion. Definitely, man. I'm glad you, um, I'm glad you, um, first I'm glad that you hit me up and I'm glad that you started it back for sure. It's, especially with everything going on right now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Perfect timing. Cause it like, honestly, the, the pandemic helped me like just reset everything, especially trying to balance, you know, while still working in corporate, but also doing the things that I love on the side, which is, you know, JQ lifestyle episodes and, um, you know, entrepreneurship and all the other stuff. So, yeah, I'm glad you're able to kick it off, man. Um, top 30 under 30, you've been killing <laughs> you, too, you too. So, hey, you know, we... <laughs> Bless yeah, you guys, man. all over exactly, exactly. So, pretty much, man, just want to have a discussion with you and like just understand like your journey. Like, last time when we talked, when we did talk in Atlanta, when I first met you, like, I already like you shared a lot of gems with me about entrepreneurship and how it was, like how you had to really, you know, get your feet dirty in, into that space, but really want to understand your journey from like, you know, what really got you into entrepreneurship from when the time you graduated from Tuskegee to now. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. So essentially I graduated Tuskegee in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, my background is HR operation. So I worked for Target, Burlington, J.C. Penney's, Marshalls. I worked for all those different companies within a seven years time span, right? So for me, I always had this inkling in the back of my head that there was something more to do for, for myself. Um, and I think that I was engaged during that time period as well. Um, but my engagement ended around like, I would say like 2015. Uh, going into 2016 so i think that was a mindset shift for me like i was really trying to figure out like yo like what i'm trying what am i trying to do like what am i trying to do what do i want to do like if this corporate shit is this what we want to what i want to do for like the rest of my life and i realized like <laughs> no like, i'm not trying to do this like i'm not trying to be in corporate for the rest of my life of course it's definitely allowed me to make good money at that time period. And I was uh, being able to take care of myself, have fun, you know, travel, things of those natures. But something was missing, right? And I think during 2016, I was trying to figure out what that next step was for me. And I came across it. I was like, yo, I've always been, to, I've always loved fashion. I've always wanted to be into fashion, but I kind of want to be different. Like, how can I really be unique and come into this industry and make an impact, right? And in, back in college, like I used to wear fedoras every now and then, but it wasn't nothing crazy. But when I, until I was 16, I was like, yo, I feel like there's a, a market for that. I feel like there's nobody in the industry making grims look cool, like making like a lifestyle movement. And I'm not talking about like, I'm talking about more of like a mixture of all styles, right? I feel like yeah. there's, a company that's focused on the heritage, American style, um, fedoras, which you have Goran Brothers and Babies and Stetsons. And these companies have been around since the 1800s. No yeah. mind me, been in the game for a minute. So they have sustainability, they have the credibility, they have all these things, right? But it, what, it doesn't look cool, right? To yeah. me, it look cool, right? Okay, I'm going to Goran Brothers, but it's like, all right, cool. You got these black individuals that are in here selling the product, but the company is not based on black culture or just culture in general, right? So I was like, yo, so when it came to my business partner, now my business partner, Taj, I was like, bro, like, I have an idea of creating a, um, a hat company. And of course, you know, he was like, I don't know, dog, you know, you're very reluctant to uh, make that step. I was like, all right, cool, I understand. Let me, let me go back to the drawing board. Let me get some more information to you. So I didn't really have any information that brought the idea to him. Yeah. And or I got the information, started researching, found a manufacturer, found all these key components. And honestly, man, we got, got the ball rolling. He was like, yo, I'm down. Because at the end of the day, he was, in his mind, he was thinking about creating a hat company. But he didn't know how to get started. 
So it was just interesting that I came to him with the idea we were able to merge those ideas together. You know what I'm saying? So that was just kind of, that's kind of like the, the foundation of the idea. You know, hats have always been a part of our culture, right? Mm -hmm. From the Harlem Renaissance to Western to every point in time, there was always something sent around a hat. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and like you mentioned, the culture piece, like it's very, it's very cultural. I really like it. Like for me, I, w I always thought about like, can I wear it? Can I, can I rock that style type of hat? Because my, <laughs> my head, I feel like my head too big, but I got a homie that um, rocks uh, hats like that. So I just sent him, you guys, Cage, and he, you know, is black owned, you know, especially at a time like, you know, right now we need to support our own, uh, you know, our people, like black owned businesses. Um, so it's a super, it's super dope. And I also like outside of the hat, you mentioned lifestyle and, you know, not just limited to, you know, um, a certain luxury, like, you know, like the style of the hat, but also outside of that, like you, you also sell like hoodies. I see you have the shirts on, you have different style hats. Um, can you explain more about, you know, what we should expect to see in the future as far as that, um, or two? <laughs> Man, honestly, bro. <clears throat> It's crazy, man. I feel like we moved in a sense of what we want to do. And when yeah. I say that, this is that I think fashion is sitting around creativity, right? And I think creativity is comes from us, right? And I think that for us, like we always like to infuse our creativity with things that we like, right? And so we started, honestly, we started doing the baseball caps because we didn't have product. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't have other product. But it kind of worked out because it, it, we saw that there was a demand for it. Yeah. Right? In the day, like, that is in our core, core product. But I think what we envision is, honestly, man, I feel like in the future, we will probably drop a line. I don't know how that's going to look. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But as we grow, as you know, as you grow, more more resources come your way. Right? Exactly. And I think that with us, we have so many like relationships, mm -hmm. right? And like my one of my my close friends, mentors, like uh, Daryl Mapp, like he is infused in a fashion culture. So like from cut and sew, all those uh, instruments, things of that nature, he's able to align us and make sure we have the quality that we want because we have some ideas that we're going to drop next year of right. some cut pieces that we want to do uh but i think for us it's just like it's just doing what we want to do man i feel like next year we we'll probably like three to four pieces uh we're going to change a couple things the way we drop uh which is going to be pretty dope i'm excited to start working on that which we're going to work on it this month to really kind of plan out how we want to be creative but honestly just change the game see the doors like I envision when you walk to our store, like you see hats, but you also see dope pieces as well. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like the diversification. I like it because when you guys um, dropped the recent hats, I was like, oh, I can, you know, that's my style. I can rock that. And when I hit up about the hoodie, and you, also, you guys also, you know, put up support black colleges and the shirts, I think it's good. I think it's an opportunity and a good, a great idea because. You, you essentially express your creativity through the product lines that can also allow others to gravitate towards the business who may not necessarily wear the, the, the brim type, who can't, who can't pull it off pretty much. Yeah. Um, hey, you got to give people options. You know what I'm saying? I think yeah, you got to have to give people options, the ability to see value on both sides, right? Yeah. But still have quality. You know what I'm saying? I think one thing we do well is, and what we do, will do well if we, as we continue to evolve is our collaborations. And that's how we that, that's how we kind of stretch, stretch our wings a little bit without taking so much risk. You know sure. what I'm saying? Like, if I want to do a dope bag, it's just like, okay, I could go do a bag, but now I got to do product development. I got to figure out source of materials. Why not just go to a company that already has that process in line, you know, and say, yo, we have a customer that will buy that, buy that bag for sure. But it's just aligning to that individual or company that sees values and we see value in them as well. Got it. Got it. With, and speaking to like the customers, I know you guys just opened um, a new office out in Atlanta. Um, 
will that office be more so for um, it just more so like a working office or will it be for consumers or customers to, to come in or, or from a future from a long term perspective? So it, it just depends, man. Like we're about to actually start fixing it up and making making it look better. Um, if COVID wasn't here, we'll probably like have it where a customer maybe can do a sizing or fit. Um, but right now, just for friends and family, like it's just for friends and family to come or having meetings or like if we have a thirty days in town that wants to try to have then they can pull up to the office. Like it's kind of for that, but <laughs> we are working on some stuff for the future within the next couple of years so hopefully by god's will that you know something may flagship around you know <laughs> <laughs> now it's nice too because you know like especially like you mentioned like you know it's in the middle of a pandemic anyway so a lot of orders and everything everything is going to be online but having that presence with you guys the office looked really good i was looking at the pictures and stuff on your page um look very creative and i mean to your point like having family friends or people who are interested that that that's a really nice space that you guys um, done there. And I think especially where, um, you know, everything is, everything is digital these days, man. Like even, yeah, even for me, like working, working in supply chain. So I definitely understand like, you know, sourcing, like, you know, all, all these different parts to make sure that the product gets to the customer. So um, I think that's, that's a brilliant idea. Um, and just like the marketing. And I guess my next question is, I know your experience, like you also, outside of uh, where brands, you kind of, um, market yourself as like a brand consultant, like within marketing. Um, yeah. How does that play a role within Wear Brands? Because I'm sure that that can help, that expertise having that um, can help with the marketing for your own company without having to, you know, pay someone else, bring someone else. I think it just gives me the ability to see other companies. So like I, I, I try to, like I'm working with a client right now, actually, mm -hmm. um, actually two clients. Um, but I try to keep it as limited as possible because I'm actually working on a startup too at the same time. So I have a startup plus web brands plus consulting that I'm doing right now. And I really can't take any more stuff right now because even the startup I'm working on right now, it's getting real, 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 real crazy. And it's, it's me and your boy, Phil, is me and his uh, company. Uh, right. So we're working on something together. Um, but to answer your question, I think it allows me to understand business more as mm -hmm. I, you know, dial in with other companies and other small brands and small businesses, it helps me understand more about my business at the same time. Um, I think it, it allows me to understand other tools and be able to apply that to the brand as well. Because I think now we're in, we're, we're in a, we're brands is in the process of adding teams. We're adding the team. So now we have a PR, we have a business development manager, uh, maybe bringing on a marketing um, director in the future. But I think these pieces will be critical to building a nationwide, worldwide company. And I think that that's where things are about to go. I think we, we have a little thing that we need to fix. And I think that's what it's all about. I think understanding that it's okay to take a dial back, regardless of how well your business is doing or how well it looks to people from, the, from a social yeah. media standpoint. I think we just, I was just having a conversation with my business partner yesterday. I feel like it's like, hey, we we'll have product coming out this month, but let's take this month to take a step back. Okay, let's fix some some processes. Let's add some processes. Let's mm -hmm. fix maybe some pieces in the brand story. Like, does it sound good? Does it look good? Right? It may look good to our consumer now, but we want it to look amazing, right? Yeah. And I think that it's put it's, it's putting layers back and it's put, putting them back on. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's okay to always fix things. Even if you, even when we get to the point where we're doing two, five million, like same process doesn't mean, because you're doing $5 million doesn't mean that you don't have any, any processes that need to be fixed. Right. So I'm really, really big on that and, and making sure that my mind is always that in that position to realize that regardless of how successful we become, there's always things that need to be fixed regardless. 100%. Yeah. It, it can be mindset shift. It can be processes. It can be the story. It can be small detailing in our marketing, making sure that it's aligned. Like, perfect example. Like, my PR was just like, you guys have to make sure that we, we be consistent with our brand name. And the reason why I said, when I say brand name, like, we have technically two different names. In a sense, two different names. Like, sometimes we go by Brims, mm -hmm. but the actual company name is Wear Brims. Got so it. It's like, I think we should focus on just Wear Brims, which makes perfect sense because 
we've only been in the game almost four years. So I think that we don't want to we don't want to confuse our customers, right? And making sure they understand like the name of the company is where Burn is, it's not Burn is. So like small things like when we do press releases, making sure that whoever's writing the article on us, making sure that they're saying where Brims, you know, and because at the end of the day, we want to be known as where Brims, we want to be known, our hats are Brims, you know, so it's kind of like small detailing, like just being keen on the details and understanding mm-hmm. that it may seem like it's not a lot, but it's, it's pretty, pretty important to make sure that the brand identity is consistent across the base. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and to that point, like I, I feel like the pandemic you mentioned, like long term, I, I think you probably learned a lot of different things during this time right now with the pandemic that helped expedite some of the goals that you guys probably. Yeah, yeah. I love those curse, but hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been a blessing, man. I guess I'll end like the last question I would like you know would love to get your insight on is like what are some what. What is some of the like the most difficult, challenging times you probably already encountered so far, like through your entrepreneurship journey? Because I know, like you know, we see a lot of entrepreneurs out there, um, but I think, like even me learning, like I'm, you know, certain, you know, certain business ventures myself that it's tough, man. Sometimes if it looks, it can look good from the outside, you know, but people really don't see the grind behind the scenes and that work to make it look you know, make, make the business really run. Like you mentioned, like the processes and um, everything. So what, what's something that you, <laughs> that you went through that was like, man, you know what? I'm going to throw in the towel. <laughs> the towel. I ain't going to lie, this Kobe, this Kobe shit was, it's a, was, a different type of, was a different type of beast. I feel like it's still impacting processes in a way. Um, but I think I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm asking it in two different ways. I think COVID was, was probably one of the main pieces of, the hardest time because the reason why I say COVID and I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm bring up another situation as well, but COVID was I feel like it's one of the main situations where I was just like, okay, because we have, a we at this time when COVID hit, we already have a loyal customer base. Mm-hmm. Right? So we're not able to fulfill orders. Then it's just like, okay, you don't want customers to think that you're scammy. You don't want them to think that you're trying to keep the money or not going to ship out the product. So I think for me, being able to pivot and making sure that we're able to communicate effectively to our customers mm-hmm. to keep that customer loyalty, right? And I think that while I was doing that and kind of stepping up to the plate, kind of a lot, like when it first happened, I was just like, oh man, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like it was very emotional because we had just hit the little peak, mm-hmm. right? We hit that peak. And it was like, you know, <laughs> it was like, it was like, you know, it was like, I was like, oh man, like we had just dropped the hat, sold out, went crazy, COVID hit, can't ship out the orders because manufacturers are shut down. Absolutely. And the manufacturer shut down for four months, right? But I'll say, and, I, and, I, and I'll say this, man, I think that you got to be hungry, bro. Like to be an entrepreneur, like you got to be hungry. You gotta be hungry. You gotta be able to pivot. Like, and I think that you have to have a strong support system. Like, you have to have a support strong because you. I'm. I consider myself very strong and very patient individual. But if I didn't have certain individuals around me to like, yo, yo, like it's gonna be good. Because you need, you need to be petted sometimes. I had to use that word, but you need to be petted sometimes because. As an entrepreneur, you get stressed out in your head because all these things are going through your head as far as like, okay, how am I going to do this? How am I going to go do that? How am I going to do this? And then sometimes you just need to, you need someone to tell you like, yo, just take a step back and just relax. Relax and think about what's the next step, right? You yeah. know what I mean? I think that that's what people forget that it's not just about you being strong and hungry and being able to pivot. Like you got to have those individuals in your corner that are going to help you with just words. It can be words that those shit, that shit mean the most. Honestly, when you have someone that can be like, yo, like, you're going to be good. Like, just take a breather and you're going to figure it out. And then that lets you know, it puts you back in the mind that you already knew that in your head. You just, everything else was clouding that thought process. Right? So you needed those individuals to give you that motivation and inspiration to say, hey, you're here for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So I think for me, it's just like, that's honestly how we're able to 
push forward because we've had so many different situations, even for me from a personal side. But I wouldn't have been able to get through these different situations and get to the point in time where we are right now without friends and family motivating me with words and with love and support and shit like that for me to able to see see the line like you see sometimes sometimes you know how it is like you see it (laughs) but you got stuff that's like in the way you got the doubts because even regardless of how much you are beast there's always doubts always always doubts there'll always be doubts right but there's a difference when having doubts right but then having that person that supports you and say yo like put that that shit ain't that's that's not a doubt like you're good and then your head like okay you're right like i've been doing this like okay let's push forward some more you know what I mean? So I think for me, man, like to answer your question, I feel like we've always had situations that gotten that ha- I'm, I got a situation right now that's like I'm like, okay, but it's a part of the, it's a part of the process. Like you're gonna have these situations that are gonna happen that's gonna better you to be able to streamline and scale your business even further. Nice, nice, nice. Like you said, man, it's all about the process. Hey man, but that was this is really good, man. I know that everything you just shared, like it's very helpful for me. Like like a lot of the stuff you just shared is it actually made me realize a lot of different things too in this space of like just you know entrepreneurial type of thoughts like just having a doubt having care support is a big thing um but man i really appreciate you for being on this episode um i will continue to support your business i'm glad it's, it's, it's a good thing since that conversation we had in atlanta for us to be in the same cohort top 30 full circle, bro. it's full circle full man. circle full circle, full full circle, circle. Man. <laughs> For we, can't real, win. we can't win if we don't if we don't i'm sorry we, can, we can't oh. win we can't we can't win if we don't have you know and if, if support support ain't it don't always be financial it, it, i look at support as words and just love and just, just pushing and motivation love, that's man. that's what that shit is all about at the end of the day mm-hmm. like you know what i'm saying like, i feel like i love the whole movement right now when it comes to the everything that's going on, but I feel like we got to keep it going, right? We got to take that through financially so that we can take out the middleman. Once we take out the middleman, like, it's, it's all free game. Exactly, exactly. Well, all right, my brother, just appreciate you, man. Uh, appreciate this you, brother. Good. Um, I'll definitely continue to share share your business around for people who, um, you know, just, just all the great things that you're doing um, to continue to focus your way. Um, and let's keep let's keep it going, man. Trust the process. You already know, dog. Stay safe, man. Likewise, bro. All right.